Theodore. There's another story coming right up. And you can always learn more about Theodore Tugboat on the internet. Find us through PBS Online. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor. In the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Vote up Hank and George and the harbor master too. We've been getting some stormy weather here in the big harbor lately. But it's up to me and the tugboats to make sure that all the ships get safely to their docks. We work together. We help each other. Roger, Antwerp Prince. Proceed to Shabuck Head. I'll have a tugboat standing by to bring you in. Can I tell you a secret? There was a time when I didn't think I wanted a tugboat's help. See, I'd just been made captain of my first ship. Sort of like this one here. Real old rust bucket. To me, oh, she was the finest ship that sailed the seven seas. We were about half a day from home, and we got caught in a big storm. Oh, waves crashing down on my ship, big as houses. And then suddenly, from under that terrible storm, there it was, an ocean-going tugboat. Well, she wanted to put her tow rope on me and pull me home. But I wanted to bring that ship in by myself. You know, that reminds me. It reminds me of my friend Theodore. See, one time, he thought he didn't need anyone's help either. The tugboats were listening carefully to the dispatcher during their morning work meeting. An ocean tug rescued a large ship by himself during the night, the dispatcher was saying. And now, the ship must be brought into the harbor for repairs. Emily, Theodore, and Hank, please meet Petra at the harbor entrance right away. Just think, Hank, said Theodore. A single ocean tug rescued this ship all by himself. Petra looked at Theodore. Theodore, I'd like you to go to the back. Remember, this ship can't steer for herself anymore. Be sure to call for Hank if you need help. Theodore's two toots said yes. Theodore was very excited. This looked like a great chance to show Petra he was ready for ocean tugging all on his own. There he was, Theodore Tugboat, all by himself found the injured ship in need of help. The sky turned black as night. His propeller churned the water white. He pushed and pushed, but she never sank. When suddenly a voice cried, Ouch! Oh, sorry, Hank. Theodore had been daydreaming and pushing Hank. The tugs buttoned their tow ropes onto the ship and began their journey into the harbor. Theodore was finding that the giant ship was hard to keep straight. Tugging with all his might, trying to keep that ship in line. His tow rope creaked and groaned like an old fiddle. Should I come and help, Theodore? Hank called. I could do it by myself, shouted Theodore, trying to sound like an ocean-going tug. Suddenly there was a sickening snap. Petra knew at once by the awful sound that Theodore's tow rope had broken. Theodore watched helplessly as his end of the ship began swinging straight toward Willie's Island. Emily, Hank, cried Petra, do something! Emily and Hank turned away from the island with all their might and just managed to pull the big ship from the dangerous rocks. Petra was very upset with Theodore. You should have called for help, she said. I'm sorry, replied Theodore sadly. I, I thought I could do it all by myself, that the way an ocean-going tug does. Tugs must work together as a team, continued Petra. Even tugs who want to go to sea by themselves one day.
Well, Theodore was feeling terrible that the ship had almost crashed, all because of him. He was on his way to get a new tow rope when he heard a small, mopey voice say, Oh, I don't suppose you're looking for me. Theodore turned and saw a little rowboat on the shore, caught between some sharp rocks. I wasn't looking for you, replied Theodore, surprised. Oh, I suppose nobody is, said the rowboat. Theodore stared at the rowboat. Who are you? he asked. My name is our boat, replied the rowboat. R for row. I wanted them to call me the SS Tiger Shark, but I suppose our boat is a name you can remember if you ever wanted to, which no one seems to. Where do you live? said Theodore. Oh, I suppose I live here, said our boat, washed up in the middle of all these sharp rocks. That's a funny place for a boat to live, said Theodore. But then our boat said, Actually, I'm kind of stuck. Don't worry, shouted Theodore, suddenly very happy again. I'll save you just like an ocean tug. But then Theodore remembered he'd lost his tow rope the last time he tried to act like an ocean tug, and that made him feel sad again. We can use mine, a voice called out. It was Hank. And so it was Hank who rescued the little rowboat from the rocks. I'll take him home by myself, said Theodore sternly. So Theodore borrowed Hank's tow rope and set off with our boat. But then he realized he didn't know where the our boat lived. Where is your home? asked Theodore. Ah, uh, I have no home, said our boat. I used to live by myself at a nice wooden dock. But then one day, a big storm smashed the dock and carried me away. The rowboat showed Theodore his bent oar and the old tow rope that was still dangling behind him. So now I just drift around, bumping from this shore to that. Of course, if I were made of metal, I could look forward to rusting. But I suppose you know, can't have everything. Theodore had an idea. I'll find you a nice new place to live. That's right. We'll find you a new home, shouted Hank, as if he had just thought of it that very moment. A new home for me will be found, announced our boat. Then again, probably not, he added. Theodore was determined he'd be the one to find our boat a home. But Hank thought he'd come along anyway. Oh, uh, well, you really shouldn't go to all the trouble, said our boat from me but uh, since you're looking my new dog shouldn't be too sunny or my wood will crack or, or too rainy or, or i'll rot and, and it shouldn't be too in betweeny or I'll... this harbor has lots of good docks said theodore it has a sandy beach said hank any clams said our boat what replied theodore clams shivered our boat the worst and keep you up day and night with their clapping Oh, I don't like noise. There's probably a very nice dock for you here at the grain terminal, said Theodore, leading the little boat along. Oh, well, wheat makes me sneeze, said our boat. <sighs> I remember where there's a dock, shouted Hank suddenly. But Theodore acted like he didn't hear Hank, and he set off again. I'll find you a new home, said Theodore. No doubt about it. And again, probably not. Theodore, called Hank. I've an idea. I can do it by myself, Hank, said Theodore. <laughs> it was an enormous sneeze for such a small boat. Would you like to blow your nose, said Hank to our boat. Blow your nose, said Theodore to himself, thinking. Blue nose. That's it! I know the perfect place for our boat. But Theodore, called Hank, don't you want to hear about my idea, Theodore? The Blue Nose, said Theodore proudly. She's the most famous sailing ship in the whole world. She has a bell, said Hank. 
bells, said our boat. Oh, they make a lot of noise. I don't like noise. Blue Nose, I was thinking, said Theodore in his most convincing voice, that you might need a nice lifeboat. Thank you, Theodore, replied Blue Nose. But I already have plenty of lifeboats. I know where there's a great dock, said Hank, right near... I can find our boat a home by myself, Hank, said Theodore. And with that, Theodore set off again with our boat, leaving Hank behind. The sun was beginning to sail out to sea, and Theodore knew the dispatcher would be wondering where he was. It was getting darker, and suddenly, Theodore felt very alone. Who's there? He said softly. And then he tooted a very soft toot, almost to himself. Did you toot for me? Asked Hank. No, replied Theodore. Oh, said Hank. Uh, I thought you might have wanted to hear where there's a, a nice old wooden dock. It's right near the sandy beach. I used to live at a nice wooden dock, said our boat. Well, said Theodore finally, I guess we could go and look at it. Great, let's go, said Hank. <laughs> Hank led the way to the sandy beach. Sure enough, there was an old swimming dock that looked just the right size for our boat. Any clams? said our boat. Oysters, said Theodore quickly. Oysters, said our boat to himself. Hmm, they'd probably like some company, said Hank. Oh, oysters are nice and quiet, concluded our boat. And so Theodore and Hank left our boat tied to the little dock and headed for home. Hank was very glad they'd found our boat a home, but Theodore seemed sad. You saved him from the rocks, said Theodore, and that dock was your idea. So I wanted to rescue him by myself, just like an ocean tug does. Oh, is that why you were acting so strangely, said Hank. Well, you did all the towing, and you told him about the oysters. Well said Theodore after a moment. I guess we did it together. That's what a team does, right? said Hank. They work together. Are we a team, Theodore? Sure we are, replied Theodore. Hank smiled his happiest smile, and the two friends sailed for home. Theodore, said Hank, do you think ocean-going tugs always work alone? I hope not, Hank, said Theodore. I hope not. And now that little rowboat is as happy as can be. Then again, probably not. Anyway, I haven't finished my story. So, there we were, caught in this great storm, when the biggest, wildest wave that ever was came crashing down on our ship and snapped the mast just like it was a matchstick. I did the only thing there was to do and I did it all by myself. Help! I yelled. You know, a tug saved my ship. And ever since then, I've been in love with tugboats. Thanks for visiting here in the Big Harbor. We'll Theodore. see you again next time. Bye-bye. Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat. Theodore. 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 And the harbor master too.